usually do movie reviews, but maybe I should. Remember, this is a spoiler review of Spider-Man Noah Him, so if you don't want to be spoiled, click off, watch another video. But let's start off by going with the plot. Spider-Man's identity gets outed as Peter Parker, and now his whole life is screwed up. He asks Doctor Strange for a spell, and that spell is for everyone to forget about his identity. The spell goes awry, and Spider-Man has to round up all of the villains from the other universes. Peter then learns that they are all going to end up dead, and tries to fix them. They escape, and there is a big battle between them. Aunt May is killed by the Green Goblin, and Peter is set on a vengeance-filled warpath to kill Green Goblin. MJ and Ned try to find Peter, and end up finding Andrew Parker and Toby Parker. They go to talk to Tom Parker and engineer cures for all the villains. They go to the Statue of Liberty and fight the villains. They all get saved. At this point, all of the people that know Peter Parker's Spider-Man are coming through the portal. Tom Parker tells Doctor Strange to do a spell. This spell is where everyone forgets who Peter Parker is. At the end, MJ and Ned don't know who Spider-Man is, don't know who Peter Parker is, and Tom decides not to involve MJ and Ned in his life so they don't get hurt again. Now, let's go let's go over some of the big actors in this movie. Of course, there's Peter Parker by Tom Holland, Peter Parker by Andrew Garfield, and Peter Parker by Tobey Maguire. Doctor Strange is acted by Benedict Cumberbatch. Daredevil is in this movie, Matt Murdock by Charlie Cox, MJ Zendaya, Ned Jacob Batalon, Aunt May Marissa Tomei, Doc Ock, Alfred Merlina, Green Goblin, William Dafoe, Electro, Jamie Foxx, J. Jonah Jameson, J.K. Simmons. The actor that stole the show, in my opinion, was William Dafoe. He managed to act both like the cowardly Norman Osborn and the crazy Go Green Goblin all in one performance. Another actor who stole the show was Tom Holland. The scene where he lost Aunt May was chilling, and at the climax when he was about to Green Goblin, absolutely terrifying to see that Peter has a dark side. J.K. Simmons was okay, he did a good job, but I guess I was expecting more of a serious version, like the first Spider-Man movies. It was amazing to see Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire in this movie. It was so impressive to see them so easily fit in their perspective ro roles. Andrew being witty and nerdy, as well as Tobey being polite and silent. I love how, out of the three of them, Tom was the youngest brother, being not as wise, Andrew being the middle child who makes all the jokes and is the comedic relief, and finally Toby being the oldest brother, the most wise. Doctor Strange was that mentor figure to Peter in this movie, like Iron Man was in Homecoming. This really wasn't his movie to shine, but when he was on the screen, he made the most of his opportunities. OMG, Daredevil is in the MCU. Charlie Cox was amazing in his five minute cameo. By the way, he's a very good lawyer. The chemistry between Zendaya and Tom Holland was fantastic. The ending was very well written, and Zendaya and Tom executed to perfection. Jacob Batalon was the perfect personification of a wisecracking man in the chair. Hopefully he becomes Hobgoblin in the future Marvel product projects, because I'm very excited to see how he portrays it. Marissa Tomei played Aunt May beautifully, and she said the line, you know, you know the line in the movies? It was refreshing to hear the line by someone other than Uncle Ben. Maybe this means that Uncle Ben isn't dead and maybe just left, opening the door for Peter to go and find him. I don't know, I'm just speculating. Alfred Molina, like most of the other villains, got a redemption arc. Also like William Dafoe, he played both the insane villain and the hero perfectly. Jamie Foxx was another source of comedic relief in this movie. His jokes really make or break the movie, because without them, it would have been very dry. Now let's talk about some of the takes I had. Aunt May's death was very surprising. I was shocked when she died. I kind of knew it, though, because she broke up with Happy, but that death was very well written, and it, is, and it made us feel Peter's emotional struggles. When I heard that the line was supposed to appear in the movie, I immediately thought that Toby was going to say it, as the older Spider-Man. And when, I, when the Spider-Man met up with Peter the moment where they all said the line at the same time, I almost lost it. The friendly banter between the three Spider-Men was the best part in the movie, in my opinion. It's just three nerds trying to catch up, them poking fun at Toby's organic web shooters, them making fun at Toby's back, you know, because he's old, their love lives, etc. 
The directing in this movie was great. There were many little Easter eggs in the trailers and the story, and there were many great directing choices. For example, when we see Aunt May breaking up with Happy, Peter and MJ enter the apartment. Happy going back in, opening the door, seeing Peter and MJ, Peter walking out, trying to figure out what happened between them all, all while trying to close the windows and turn off the TV so they don't find out that the world knows that he's Spider-Man. All of that was filmed in one cut, thus creating the illusion of utter chaos. The timing and the directing were perfect. The second best part of the movie was the redemption arcs of all the people in the story. It wasn't just the villain's chance to be whole again, instead the heroes also had redemption arcs as well. Toby couldn't save his best friend's father in this area, but once again in this movie he engineers a cure for Norman Osborn. He also finally gets to see Doc Ock as a father figure once again. Andrew gets to save Max, Electro, and explain to him that he's not a nobody. He also gets to save MJ from dying from the fall. He couldn't do that with Glenn. Tom decides to save all of the villains instead of sending them back to death. He also decides not to kill Green Goblin at the end. Another thing that I picked up on was when Toby and Andrew were introduced into the film, Toby was, use was wearing that cool youth pastor shirt, right? And Andrew was wearing the Spider-Man shirt. The part where they talk about their love life, it shows the perfect example of why Toby, he put Peter first and came out the other end as a better person. While Andrew, he spent most of his time as Spider-Man wailing on thugs and never got to have that chance of sorting out his pain as Peter Parker. post credit scenes. They were a little underwhelming. Um, they didn't reveal much about future plans. The first one with the Venom symbiote could have major implications on the world if Kevin Feige allows it to. I have a feeling that the symbiote will eventually attach to Flash Thompson and he becomes Agent Venom. The second credit scene was just a trailer for Doctor Strange 2. Would have much rather it be like, uh, like a three second clip of Wanda versus Doctor Strange and not the whole trailer that we can just find online. Alright, here we go. Some minor nitpicks. Ned, MJ, and the MIT storyline was kind of shoehorned in the movie. I get that it was only there so that Peter would make the choice to forget about it, but I don't know. I would have loved to see more of Charlie Cox's Matt Murdock, but I guess Feige is saving that for Echo or a new Daredevil show. Very little nitpick here, but they did all of that legwork in the Venom 2 post credit scene so that Venom could appear in No Way Home, but he didn't make an appearance to the post credit scene. Plus, there were only five villains, and I would have loved to see Venom as the sixth villain, so it could be Sinister Six. Also, there could have been some banner between Toby Parker, Tom Parker, and Venom. Overall, this movie is my favorite MCU movie to date. The balance of humor, sadness, and action is unreal. Whenever there is a lot of action, the movie transitions into a heartfelt moment, and then transitions back to humor. For example, Peter Parker vs. Green Goblin. That transitions into Aunt May's death, and that transitions into Peter's meeting Ned and MJ. The acting is stellar, the script is stellar, the setting, it all mashes together to create the perfect movie. Let me know if you guys want me to review any other movies. Um, but for now, thanks guys for watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.